justify it. Because this narrative, and Fury's very clever with narratives, that everyone else is spinning right now of, oh, he was a shadow of himself. He wasn't. It was the same Fury we've seen for the last four f***ing fights. The difference is, he was in there with a live dog. Go back and watch Dillian White and Derek Chisora fights. Those guys, with all due respect, did not belong in there at that level. Deontay Wilder gave him hell in that third fight. He really struggled to get that over the line. He wasn't in great shape. He was slower than usual. His punches weren't as accurate. It's all the same things that we've seen in the Francis Ngannou fight. We've seen them throughout the last four fights. And the really clever thing Fury did while he had everyone in the palm of his hand and all of his fans were sucking him off was he used the narrative to control why he was the best and that why he didn't have to fight certain guys. And you see, this is the same exact thing that I've been saying about Tyson Fury and the selection of the people that he chose to fight, okay? Dillian White, Derek Jasora, Deontay Wilder, now Francis Ngono. And shout out to True Jordy for making the point known, okay? Uh, really just... Putting it into perspective that Tyson Fury has been the same fighter. He's been the same fighter. He's picked the same type of opponents and the certain opponents that he has not chosen for certain reasons. See, the fighters that he's chose to fight have been pretty much the same type of fighter. But then more importantly, like True Jordy's pointed out, he's been the same fighter. He hasn't really changed. You know, and a lot of people uh, believe that like Johnny Nelson came forth and said, well, hey, Tyson Fury's legs are gone. He's not the same anyway. You know, the overall hidden agenda for going to the Crunks gym is because he couldn't float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And of course, I was the guy with my own individual mind that didn't really believe that as such. OK. Meaning he doesn't have legs at all. I don't think that's true. I think he has a certain ability to move around with certain opponents. Okay, that's the difference. I don't think that he could keep up with that shit with someone that has good footwork. I think someone with good footwork will show him that his footwork is not so good. And that's the reason why he selected certain fighters that he's fought in the last four fights. Okay. Okay. Even guys like Otto Vileen was giving him problems simply because Otto Vileen had fast hands. Who else has fast hands? Andy Ruiz. I think Andy has uh, a better chin than Otto Vileen, but Otto Vileen stuck in there and stuck it out for 12 rounds, busted him up, gave him a good fight, hurt him in the 12th round, right? Lost the decision, but then again, that was his, one of his toughest fights. So, toughest fights uh, Otto Vileen, Deontay Wilder, three. And now Francis Ogono. You know what I mean? But all of these fights were all hand selected based on who they were. You know, Otto Vileen hasn't really fought anyone. He wasn't tested. He was undefeated. Swedish fighter. Deontay Wilder's already beat him twice. Go figure. Francis Ogono never been in the ring before. There you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a hard challenge with all three of those, right? So, I mean, these things have to be pointed out from Tyson Fury because Tyson Fury has been getting away with selecting certain fighters for a very long time. I mean, a very long time. And what people need to understand is the fights that it's taken so long to make are the fights that you have a big question mark or you should. Based on what we discussed, okay, based on what True Jordy said, based on what I reiterated, these things have to be discussed and you have to ask yourself, well, why aren't these fights happening? Why are these fights the fights where the hur hurdles are just too damn high to jump in order for these fights to get made? Those are the questions you ask yourself, you know, and to answer those questions, those fights are not getting made because those fights are the ones that are not really sure to be won. Okay. Okay. Tyson Fury wasn't 100% on those fights. In fact, Alexander Usyk, he was supposed to fault that dude a long time ago. A long time ago. See, this is November of 2023. He had, not, he had an opportunity to take on uh, Alexander Usyk earlier this year. It didn't happen. 
earlier last year, it didn't happen. What happened was Dillian White. Now, the funny thing about the Dillian White is, uh, issue was Dillian White had a fight set with Otto Mylene, and all of a sudden that is fizzed away because there wasn't a guarantee that Dillian White would have won that fight. That fight could have been a banana peel based on uh, the knowledge, the known knowledge that Otto Vileen gave Tyson Fury a very hard fight. You know what I mean? Now, if I was a betting man, I would have bet for Dillian White, but I am not a betting man. <laughs> so, but then again, a fight like that with Otto Vileen, a guy with only one loss, okay? Coming off his toughest fight with Tyson Fury, but giving Tyson Fury one of his toughest fights. Nah, I don't know if that was the way to go. Either way, that fight didn't happen. And what happened, ironically, Dillian White and Otto Vileen supposedly didn't happen based on some type of injury. But then Dillian White went right on into training with Tyson Fury. But at that same time, Tyson Fury had an option to take on Alexander. I mean, yeah, Alexander Usyk simply because uh, that fight was on the table for him. And he, what did he say? I am not ready. I want a tune-up. And the tune-up was Dillian White. So basically, Dillian White and Tyson Fury uh, skipped the beat at their own levels. Dillian White for Otto Vileen, Tyson Fury for uh, Dillian White. <laughs> so those fights could have happened a long time ago. But it was a reason why that fight didn't happen at the time, because Tyson Fury was unsure of how he was. Maybe his ability, maybe his training, maybe all the above. But he was not sure that he was going to beat Alexander Usyk, an unbeaten guy that moved up from cruiserweight or middleweight or whatever weight. Okay, so that's what that is. That's all that's about. Tyson Fury picking certain fighters to look a certain way. You know, and if the narrative people in closing, if the narrative of him uh, and his legs are not the way they used to be, they will soon be exposed or he will keep avoiding fighters that have footwork. So if you keep if you if you observe Tyson Fury and you observe him and he's never able to fight guys like Otto, like like uh, Alexander Usyk. Well, there you go. You know what I mean? Draw your conclusions right there. But my thing is Tyson Fury, based on the way he picks opponents, he's not as good as people think he is. And in, in, in any reason, we will see that is the case. He won't be the guy that beats everyone. He will be the guy that gets exposed by a guy that's pretty much, you know, um, either uh, not looked at as well as people look at Tyson Fury or, you know, gets knocked out or stopped. But nonetheless, Tyson Fury, if he keeps fighting guys with different challenges and different styles, he will soon be defeated. OK, <laughs> but I mean, I think that's everyone. And I think as, as, as well, as long as you fight uh, the best fighters out there, i.e. Joe Joyce, you will come across a guy that will beat you and there's nothing wrong with that. It's what do you do to make adjustments, to come back again, to fight the guy that defeated you that time. It's not about being undefeated at all. It never really was. You know, when we can throw those Mayweather Bibles away, we'll be fine. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of True Jordy breaking this down and me counterpunching thereafter. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunched. Peace.